Are you looking for how to learn and master some of the basic Camtasia editing environment features? In this video, we're going to tinker with the scrubber and timeline features so that you can be a lot more productive as you navigate and use the video editing workspace in Camtasia. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Gord here. Welcome. If it's your first time here and it's your passion to make great videos, become a ninja at video editing and learn more tips on how to succeed with video and marketing on YouTube, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. Today's video is about focusing in on some of the basic features and shortcuts associated with the timeline and the scrubber. What we cover today will help you get more efficient and productive in navigating while editing. These skills are among the skills you need to master before you dive deeper into the more technical skills and savvy skills associated with your core editing tasks like trimming, cutting, and animating media. To start with, let's quickly go over the scrubber and how you can navigate using that. First, we have our playhead down here. Then you see the scrubber here, which is this area right here, but just below the uh, canvas. And we have the round ball. And notice that if the when we move to the right, the playhead moves to the right or to the left, the playhead moves to the left. But you notice how it moves in a quite significant way for a little movement of, of the, the ball dragging it. And that's because we have a long timeline here. So that's at 17 minutes. But one of the other ways using the scrubbing tool we can navigate is here using these arrows here for next and previous media, or we can use the shortcut control alt period for next clip or media and control alt period for the previous or click these buttons. So with the playhead here, we're going to go to the next clip. So you see how it's navigating nicely along and then we can do the previous. Likewise, we can do frame by frame. So we can go next frame or previous frame. If I click this arrow here or previous frame there, and we can't really see the granularity of the frame movement at, at this stage, but you'll see in a moment that we can do that as we jump down now into the timeline to actually see uh, the features of zooming in on the timeline. In this area right here, you can see we have a zoom capability, which is for the timeline. Here's the time reference line here with the increments. So we go from seven minutes to eight minutes. You see here, there's uh, just a certain number of notches here in the timeline on the time reference. And that if I zoom in, you can see that now seven minutes to eight minutes is a little greater distance. So we're getting, you know, more granularity by zooming in. And now it's broken it into different time increments. We have seven, seven, 20, seven, 40, eight to eight minutes. So now it's much broader. And likewise, you can go minus to bring it out. But one of the other cool features of this um, zooming is that if I got way zoomed in too deep, I could just click the magnifying glass, which will automatically bring all media on the timeline into view. So if I click that, bang, everything is back there on display. Now, what I want you to notice is there's a shortcut called Control Shift 7 there as well. So that can be done by just pressing Control Shift 7. But associated with Control Shift 7 are two other nice keystroke uh, shortcut combos. There's Control Shift 8 and Control Shift 9. Control Shift 8 allows us to zoom the timeline selection in. So let's say I already know that I want to work on this little piece here in the beginning, but I can't really see anything right now. If I click on Control Shift 8, look what it does. It fills the width of the timeline and it brings out my, 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 the full details of the area that I selected. I love using this because I often go into edit and add animations and tune um, transitions. And this, this is very helpful for me to be able to zoom in on this level. Now I'm going to go zoom back out to the full view and click on control shift seven. And that brought everything into view. Now, another way to zoom in aside from using the plus sign right here, as you can see, is also done by pr pressing control shift equals, as you saw there. So you could do the short key, keystroke control shift equals, which I'll just do here, control shift equals. 
So that just, again, increases us and brings the time granularity to be even closer and covering more area on the, on the timeline. And then if I wanted to do the negative, you can click Control Shift minus. So on a Windows keyboard, though those things are right beside each other, the Control plus and minus. So it's, it's pretty easy to operate. Let's bring everything back into, into view. And another way to do this, which is invisible by just the, the shortcut options here, you can use your scroll wheel. If you use the control button and the scroll wheel, so I'm going to press down control and use the scroll wheel. Notice that I'm zooming in and see what happens to the ball here in this area. It's moving. So as I hold the control button down, I move the scroll wheel up. It keeps going to the right. So do you see that? So you zoom in and likewise, I'm holding the control button down. I can scroll downward and it's zooming out. So that's just another option, nice keystroke option to use it. If I want to go back to put everything to fill the width of the screen, I just do my quick control shift seven, which I like to do often. A few more quick timeline navigation tips before we finish up this video. One is to go to the end of the timeline. So we're, we're right here now near the beginning. You can click control and then the end key. You can see our playhead has now gone to the end. Likewise, to go to the beginning of the timeline, you can click on Control Home, which brought us right back to the beginning here. What I also like to do is if I wanted to select everything, I could just go another way to select everything would be to, to click Control Shift, which now makes it a selection, then the end key. So see everything is selected there. So this is quite handy when you want to do things like produce your timeline selection, just that piece that you want to use. And I often use that, that concept of selection, like a small piece is, is often by using markers as a tactic to, to um, help me do some selection. So if I double click on this marker I have here, and then I click control shift right bracket and then the right so the right bracket will take me to the next marker notice how i've got that selection made and then i can click produce timeline selection as and then i, I often will use that as a quick means for testing pieces in my video so it, it makes it you know really easy to, to navigate you know of course you can just move the playhead and then move, move uh, the handles and cover an area you want and do the produce timeline selection as. But I often find it's easy to just like, you know, pop a marker on and another marker on. And then in this case, I can go control um, left square bracket to go back to the previous marker. And then if I click control right square bracket, so that's bouncing between the two. And if I wanted to select it, I just need to introduce the control shift and now right square bracket and I select the area. If I want to extend the selection, I can click that combination one more time while I have the control and shift key down and I just click control shift right bracket again. So you can see we can, you know, obviously navigate and scan the, the whole timeline and gather as much of a selection area as we want. So there you have it, a bunch of tips on navigating the timeline, moving around by clip to clip, marker to marker, as well as some practical ways of using that to make your editing more productive. Well, there you have it. Lots of tips and shortcuts on how to be more productive with your editing in Camtasia. If you missed the other videos in this basic series, be sure to click on the playlist link provided on the screen here or in the video description below. Question of the day. Are you using a lot of the shortcuts that are available to you when editing in Camtasia? If so, what are your favorite and most productive shortcuts? Like this video if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out some of the additional Camtasia tutorials to help your editing journey. And I'll see you in another video soon.